Whether you're a beginner or a longtime Ableton Pro, this is for you. In the next seven days, you're going to get better at Ableton. I promise you. If you do the things I mentioned in this video, and you truly practice all of them, by next week you'll notice a positive difference in your music, in your skills, and in your speed when working with Ableton Live. I'm about to show you specific things you can do each day in the next week. And stick around for step seven, where we'll put all of this together. Now everything is in this one video. I could spread it out over seven parts, but you know how that is. You're trying to find that video, see if you missed one. It just becomes a hassle. <laughs> So it's all right here. You can pause it and come back to it each day or take notes or do whatever works for you. And one last thing before we get started, I'm using Ableton Live Suite. If you're using Lite or Intro or the standard version, I've tried to adjust the options where I can. You can just take the concept and adapt it to your own version by trying things with a different device or whatever you need to. Everything here is flexible. Day one, what we're gonna do today is learn five new keyboard shortcuts and use them over and over and over until it just becomes automatic and you build up that muscle memory. You can find a whole list in the Ableton manual, but some of my favorite ones are these. If you want to insert a new audio track, you can hit Command T or Control T if you're on Windows. If you want to add a MIDI track instead, it's the same thing. You just add Shift. So it's Shift Command T or Shift Control T if you're on Windows. It seems like just a basic thing because you could go up here to create and then do uh, insert audio track or insert MIDI track. But anything that you do very, very often is worth learning the keyboard shortcut for because you might just save a few seconds every time. But if you're doing it thousands and thousands of times, it really adds up. Another one that you might be using already, but if you're not, this is so useful. Sometimes if you're trying to change a setting and you need it to be exact, let's say we want to get minus nine, it can be a little bit tough to get it right on. If you hit shift while you're moving around, it will let you have that fine detail so you can get exactly what you need. This one can be really useful because we always need more space on the screen. If you hit option command B, you can move that browser out of the way and bring it in and out. You could be working on your stuff as soon as you need the browser, bring it back in, do whatever you need to, and then you can hide it again. It's just so useful to get that extra screen space and it's just really easy to switch back and forth. Okay, this next one I didn't even know about until I was doing some research on something else and found this sort of randomly. If you're in arrangement view and you want to reverse a sample, it's super easy, you just hit the letter R and it reverses it and R again to bring it back. And that might be more useful for some people than others if you're reversing samples a lot. It can make your life a whole lot easier than hitting the reverse button every time. So if you've got a whole bunch of tracks and you just wanna make some space and just have it look a little bit better, we can go back to that earlier shortcut and move the browser out of the way. And then what you might wanna do is go and reduce the space that these take. So you go to each of these arrows, but there's a much easier way to do it. You just hit Alt U or Option U and you hit it a couple of times until everything's minimized, then all of these tracks are just taking up so much less space and you can see your arrangement if I had an arrangement here. <laughs> and then you can do the same thing, Alt U and unfold everything and have more detail. And if you just wanna fold a few of these, you can go with the arrow keys to the track that you want up and down. And then when you find the one you want, you hit the left or the right arrow to fold and unfold. It's so quick and easy this way. So choose five shortcuts you want to learn today, and you can go up to the menu at the top and each of these settings, this is under edit, you can have a quick look at what you want to do, what you do regularly. If you're doing group tracks, you can use command G. It shows you all of the shortcuts here for everything. Choose the options that you use very, very regularly, and then just practice, practice, practice all day until it becomes automatic. Day two today is automation day. You can do so much with automation. You can automate devices, you can automate the BPM for your whole track, whatever you need to do. So if we create a track here, you can do automation either in session view here or in arrangement view, just this one here. And I'll show you how to do both. We'll create a track here for later and go back to session view. So in session view, you can hit the second one and decide what you want to automate. It doesn't matter what it is for this. We can go and have something at minus 96% and then by the end of it, have it at 100%. And that's fine, but if you want to have some variations in what you're working on, you might just do this and have it like this. So you'll have it ramping up slowly and then it gets faster near the end. But then if we add a point here and move it around, you can tell it's not 
very smooth. They're just basically hard cuts. So if we undo it and we hit Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac, you can tell you've got a curve going. So you can have some smooth ramps up and down and have a little bit more of a natural feel to what you're automating. So if we go back to Arrangement View, you can hit A or go to the Automation button here and it will give you some options. So we're back to where I had Drift and we can choose whatever it is that we want. We can automate the same way as earlier, do this. And then if we want a little bit of a curve, we hit Alt and we can adjust it this way. Then if you have your automation the way you want it, let's say in a rise before the big drop in an EDM song, you might want to keep the automation as is, but move the MIDI notes that are behind it. You can hit the lock here and then you can move stuff around here and your automation doesn't move at all. Another interesting way to do some automation is to go to the pencil tool here and then you hit Alt while you draw and you can draw in some patterns and do a whole bunch of stuff with that. And if you right click on the clip, you can choose a whole bunch of different shapes like this. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. And even if you've been using automation for years, there might be some little things you didn't know about. Just practice and play around with buttons and spend the day automating stuff and see what you come up with. All right, you made it to day three. I'm proud of you. Today, we're gonna learn a synth fully. We're gonna learn everything we can about one specific Ableton synth. So you can choose whichever one you wanna work with. There's operator, wavetable, the new drift, tension, collision, whatever. And if your version of Ableton Live is intro or light, you might only have access to impulse and drift. And if you're on an older version, you might not even have access to those, but you have simpler. It isn't a synth, but it'll do the job for what we need. So once you chose what you wanna work with, you're gonna to go to every single knob, every single option on it and figure out what it does. So you'll spend the day going to each of the different panels, if there are different panels, and just trying everything. And remember, if one of the buttons doesn't do anything, just keep trying something else, then come back to that button because it might be doing something differently once you've got modulation set up or something down the line. Just go back and forth and figure out every single button. And once you've done them all, go back and start over in a different order. And once you've got a good idea of what everything does, load up a preset and then initialize the same synth on a different track and try to recreate the preset. So go to every button and every knob on the preset that you loaded, then do the same thing on the one you initialized on a different track, just a synth with no preset loaded at all. And while you make the changes, don't just look at octave one, octave one, and go back and forth with that. While you're changing your blank one to match, try different settings. As you're moving the knob, move it up and down and just see what it does to that particular preset. And then once you're done, leave it at whichever level it was on the preset that you're using. So as you're recreating this preset, you're learning even more about the synth and what it does based on whatever sound is coming out of that preset. So the way you would do this is we'll use Drift as an example. You'd go to Instruments, search for Drift, and then have this here. You can expand it and just choose any of these presets. It doesn't really matter which one we choose. Now we'll use one of the shortcuts that we talked about earlier, the Command Shift T. It'll load up a blank MIDI track, and then we bring Drift directly here where there won't be any preset loaded. So this is just in its initialized state. And if you've got Ableton Push, it's really nice to go back and forth between the tracks with the left and right arrows. You'll go to their preset and then go to yours and then just start adjusting stuff back and forth. And just remember to pay attention to what the knobs do while you're doing this so you can learn what everything does. All right, day four. Today you're gonna find three devices that you've never used before, and you know there are some. If you're choosing synths or instruments, you're gonna make a track using just those three devices. If they're effects you're choosing, you're gonna make a track and use those three effects on every track in your track. So you can go in the browser here under instruments and see if there's anything you've never used before, or go to the audio effects and find stuff here, or even the MIDI effects. Now really try to be creative. Use them in every way you can imagine. Try multiple instances of each and try moving them around in different orders, see if it makes a difference. If it's the vocoder, try putting it on instruments you wouldn't expect. Most people will try it on vocals and drums. Try it on anything. See what interesting sounds you can get out of it. Okay, we're already at day five. Today is comping day. Now comping is a relatively new feature in Ableton Live, so many of us haven't used it very much yet, but even if you use it regularly, there's always stuff to learn. 
In my case, I don't do tons of vocal tracking, so I'm sort of learning this part at the same time as you. <laughs> so what we want to do is set the loop points to what we want to record here. I'll turn on the metronome and we want to hit loop here. All right, we have to record enable the track and I will make this loop a little bit shorter and we'll just record a basic vocal. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we've got this and if we right click here, Where is it? Okay, I couldn't figure out why this wasn't working. Usually when you right click here, it has your take lane options over here somewhere. And it turns out that when we turn the automation on earlier, we have to turn this back off. So you can hit the letter A or just click that button. And then you can come down here and you'll have show take lanes here. So it shows the four takes that we had and the bottom one is the most recent one. So if we want to take a combination of each, so we've got that first one, do the two from here three from here and the four will be from there. Three, four. So let's go back and listen to the whole thing. One, two, three, four. And we can mix and match. So we can change the three to this one. We'll do the two as a lower one and we'll go back to this one. So four, one, two, three, four. So you might have noticed when I choose any part of it, it chooses automatically. That's because this pencil here is selected. Otherwise, you'll have to choose what you want and hit enter or return, and that'll bring it up to the main lane. So you can do this with MIDI or with audio, and the more you practice, the smoother the end result is. You can work with these as if they're regular clips, so you can do some crossfades, you can copy, paste, move stuff around, do whatever you need. Once you're happy with what you have, you can just go back here, right click, and click on show take lanes again, which will remove them and put you back into your project as if nothing happened. All right, day six, and tomorrow we put that all together for that final project. So today you've got some choices to make, and part of that depends on which version of Ableton Live you're using. If you've got Suite, you can do any of these three that I'm gonna mention. If you're on intro, you'll probably be going to the compressor. So we're gonna learn another Ableton device in depth. The first one is the hybrid delay, which is amazing. It used to be called the Convolution Reverb, and then it was called Convolution Pro. Now they mix the Convolution in with the regular reverb. But anyways, this thing can sound so good, and especially if you're able to get some other impulse responses and load them in here, uh, you can get some really interesting sounds out of it. It can do so much. I love this freeze button, and it's worth spending some time doing some sound design with it and just making some really interesting sounds. Your other option is for today to be compressor day. There's a regular compressor and the glue compressor. They both can do some interesting stuff. It's just sitting there and learning everything you can about it. Compression is one of those things that when you're starting out, it can be a little bit tough to wrap your head around. So really trying them on all kinds of different sources, whether it's vocals or different instruments. And again, just learning what each knob does and just listening for that detail. And your third choice for today is Echo. It seems like a delay isn't worth spending your time on, but trust me, this one is worth learning. I love the stuff under character. The ducking is amazing in this. The wobble is interesting, especially if you're making lo-fi or you need some variations to make your sounds more analog. There's a built-in gate. There's a whole bunch of modulation effects. This will keep you busy all day. All right, the last day, day seven. Today, we put this all together. You're gonna make one of these four sounds or all four for extra credit if you want. But the catch is you can only use Ableton devices. Try including all of the ones that you use throughout the week. So there's a trailer boom, a whoosh, a rise or a build up, which is probably the most fun out of all of these, or a super saw lead. Now don't just spend a few minutes and be done with it. You'll wanna go and listen to some examples of the sound you're working on. Really take the time, try to notice everything, the frequencies in it, how long it is, how the sound changes over time, and just try to make the sound as interesting as you can. Keep building on to it and see what extra levels you can add to it to make it bigger and fancier. And that's our week. Hopefully when you wake up tomorrow and you start working on your regular projects, you'll notice a difference in how you're working in Ableton Live and your music is that much better. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.